Hello and welcome to CruiseReport.com Travel Tech Review of the Panasonic Lumix DMC TS10. Now, this pocket digital camera from Panasonic is unique in a couple of ways. Number one is, and probably the most significant, is the camera is waterproof and shockproof. So this is of special interest to people who travel and need a, a good camera to take with them you know, when they're on a cruise or when they travel for any purpose because you know, if you go to the beach, you can throw the, the camera in, you know, around your neck or in your bathing suit pocket and if you go in the water, you're not going to hurt the camera. Uh, it's waterproof down to about 10 feet, so you can take, not just waterproof, you can actually take pictures underwater, you can shoot video underwater. And we did a little bit of testing of that, we'll show you later. Um, but, you know, that's a great feature for somebody who travels with a camera, especially if you travel outdoors. Now, I'm going to take a few seconds and just walk around the camera and show you some of the different features. You'll notice from the front of the camera, first, first thing you notice is it's red. The camera does come in a few different colors, which is kind of nice. And it, it has kind of an aluminum body on it. It feels pretty tough. It's also shockproof, so if you drop the camera, uh, it should be able to withstand a little bit more abuse uh, than, say, uh, well, for example, our Panasonic ZS7. Uh, which we really love the camera, but we dropped it on this last trip, and it did sustain some damage. This camera probably would have survived that drop uh, had we had this camera. The camera has a small lens on the front. It does not protrude from the camera, and there is no protection for the lens. So when you turn the camera off, uh, it doesn't have a door that protects it. Now, the reason I point that out is because you have to be careful uh, when you go to take a picture or shoot video that there's no fingerprints because it's very easy on a camera this size to grab it and accidentally you know get your thumbprint on there so we always try to make sure we wipe the lens off with a little uh, microfiber before we start shooting pictures there is a flash uh, the flash is uh, it's decent it's not great uh, but it's about like you you know pretty typical for a pocket digital camera it's nothing out of this world and then the only other thing on the front is the little uh, AF autofocus uh, assist lamp, which is like a little LED. Okay, on top of the camera, you'll notice uh, it's a pretty simple layout. You have your little microphone here. It does not have stereo microphone, just a regular mono mic. has an on-off button. You have your focus and shutter release button. And then you have a special uh, intelligent auto button. I'll talk more about that later in the use section. If we take a look at the right side of the camera. This is where you'll find the door behind which are the ports that the camera offers. And because this is a waterproof camera, it has a double lock mechanism requiring that you unlock it and then you can pull on the second tab to open the door. And you'll notice there is a orange rubber gasket around this door to seal it so that no water gets in the camera. After you're in here, you'll have a USB port, AV port, and a DC in port. There is not an HDMI port on this camera, or HDMI output, I should say. To close the door, you simply snap it shut and then lock it if you plan to use it underwater, just to be safe. This prevents you from accidentally opening the door while the camera's underwater. On the bottom of the camera, You'll notice the same type of locking mechanism, and I'm going to turn it the other way so you can read it. So you just basically unlock it, flip the little tab, and this door flips open, and this is where your battery and your SD memory card are stored. It has the same rubber gasket, so it's waterproof, and <clears throat> it has a very small, very thin, I should say, very thin battery uh, that comes with the camera, and not not great battery life, it's acceptable, but we always recommend on these pocket digitals to buy a spare battery and keep it charged and keep it with you because battery life is always going to be minimal when you have a battery this size. And then of course you have your SD card. Uh, we use a 16 gigabyte uh, class 6 card for all of our tests and uh, simply shut the door, lock it down, and you'll notice you have a quarter inch standard um, tripod mount on the bottom of the camera as well. 
So you do have to take the tripod mount off to get to the battery or the SD card on this camera. Now when we take a look at the back of the, of the TS-10, you'll notice it's pretty standard operation. You have a 2.7 inch screen. The screen on this camera is adequate. It's not great. So in bright sunlight, it can be difficult to see. But for most situations, indoor or even outdoors on a cloudy day, you can see the screen pretty good. There's a wide angle and zoom or telephoto uh, buttons here on the back of the camera. Underneath there's a mode button. I'll explain that later. A playback button. Your directional pad with a menu button and an OK button. You have a display button and a quick menu. So let's, let's just take a, a look real quick at how some of these different buttons work on this camera. The first thing we do is turn the camera on using the on-off switch on top. And you'll notice the camera boots up very quickly. When the camera comes on, you always get this little precautionary message that asks you to review the precautions before using the camera underwater. Now, you can hit the arrow key over here. You can either view the precautions or you can hit this and hit the OK button and that goes away. What I started doing is I notice if you hit the shutter release button, that message also goes away. So you don't have to use the, the menu button to get rid of it. Again, your wide angle telephoto, you can zoom in. The camera has a 4x zoom. It's a little slow and a little noisy. It may, there actually is a little mechanical noise associated with the zoom. The mode button, this camera has four modes. When you click the mode button, you'll see here, normal picture. Let me use the little menu to show you. Normal picture, scenery, there's a scene mode, and motion picture. Now, scenery I just happen to have that selected. What that is basically is a pre-programmed scene mode. If I select that, and then if I were to hit the menu button, you can go up here and you can choose from any of the pre-programmed scene modes, and you're basically programming that, that mode to be whatever scene you want. So if I choose, for example, portrait, and then I go back and hit the mode button again, you'll see now portrait is in the second position. So it's like well, it's your uh, pre-programmed scene mode. Down here you have a second scene mode where you can go in and you can select from any scene and it will remember the last scene mode that you have selected. So it's almost like you have two different uh, pre-programmed scene modes in the camera. Motion picture, again when you select that and you press the shutter button, the camera will begin recording video. Now this particular camera will shoot up to 1280 by 720 high definition video. It does a decent job. Uh, it does not do a great job, but it is okay. We shot some video on our, on our last trip when we tested this. Uh, we carried this with us on a uh, seven-day Caribbean cruise, and we shot some video during the cruise, and we got some good results. And, and there is a sample video on YouTube and on Vimeo where you can see some sample clips that we shot with this camera. One nice thing about this camera, well, let me go back. One confusing thing about the camera is when you have it set to motion picture, if you just pick up the camera, you turn it off, you turn it back on, it will be in the motion picture mode when you come back to it. If you then forget that you had it in motion picture and you want to just take a snapshot, you're not going to do that. You're going to hit the shutter release button and it's going to start recording a movie. It's a little bit confusing. So you have to remember if you had it in the movie mode, you can't just grab this camera without changing the mode and start taking pictures. However, Panasonic does have one little workaround to this problem. On the top of the camera is an intelligent auto mode. Now intelligent auto will let you take a fully automatic photograph no matter what mode the camera is on the back. So even though we are in motion picture mode right now, if I hit the IA button on top, 
it will switch to the intelligent auto mode and I can take a photograph. If I press the IA button a second time, it will switch back to motion picture. So the IA button will toggle between intelligent auto and whatever mode is selected over here through the mode button, through the mode selection on the menu. Same thing with portrait. If I have portrait selected and I take a portrait photo, that's fine. If I then want to take an intelligent auto, I press that and it will, you can see up in the top left, it's toggling between portrait and intelligent auto. So that's a neat little feature. It's kind of a little workaround they put in there just to make up for that mode button. Now the playback button is actually a little more intelligent than the one on our ZS7 because when you press it, it lets you see the pictures that you have recorded or the videos that you have recorded on the, on the SD card. However, if you want to immediately take a picture, you just press the shutter button and it immediately goes back into the record mode. That's a very nice feature. Some cameras, like our ZS7, have it a switch. And if you forget and leave the playback switch on and you go to take a picture, forget it. You're just going to be in the playback mode. So this camera does have a nice feature where you can uh, defeat the playback mode using the shutter release. The four-way menu navigation panel is pretty standard to most cameras. If I hit the menu button, you'll see it pulls up my on-screen menu. Panasonic has a very intuitive menu system. You'll have no trouble understanding how this works. If you want to select your picture size, you simply go through the, you know, hit OK and it will choose the picture. If I want to go to a 10 megapixel 4x3, that's very easy to do. So it's a very simple, very uh, intuitive menu. I think uh, any digital camera user will appreciate how easy Panasonic has uh, set up their menu system. In addition to using these buttons to navigate through the menu, they also have other functions. For example, the left button is a flash, uh, I'm sorry, a self timer. So if you need to do a two second self timer or a 10 second self timer, you can select that press the shutter release and it will time, you know, do a two-second time. So if you have the camera on a tripod, you want to take a picture of yourself or if you want to take a picture of something without any handshake on a tripod, you would use that feature. The top button is your exposure compensation. You can go down up to two stops on the exposure or you can go up the other way to make it brighter. And this also controls flash exposure as well if you have flash turned on and it works very well. The right button is your flash on, flash off, red eye, and auto flash settings. This is a very good feature to be able to turn the flash off and force it to be off. So if you're in a museum where you're not allowed to use a flash, or sometimes when we're on a cruise ship, uh, they, they don't allow you to use flash photography if you're in one of the shows. Uh, because they don't want to disturb the performers and don't, don't want to disturb the audience. So you can use the force flash off for that. The bottom button is your macro setting. So if you're doing close-up photography of flowers or any close-up picture, you could use the macro setting. At the very bottom is a display button, which changes your on-screen display. You can have it display a grid. So if you're doing, uh, if you, you know, if you need something to kind of help you line up for a... Uh, either horizon to make sure it's level or if you're doing a rule of thirds so that you make sure your subject is in the left or right third or bottom or top third of the screen it's great for that. The next display setting lets you see your date and time and some of your other settings as well as your battery life and it also shows you the number of photos that you have remaining on this SD card uh, at the current resolution settings. Hit display again and it just shows a blank screen. You also have the Panasonic Q menu which is a quick menu and that'll pull up a lot of very easy quick to adjust so that you don't have to go into the main menus to make these adjustments. You can do it on the fly very quickly. Very easy camera to use, very simple to set up, uh, very intuitive and you will get used to it within one day of using it you'll feel right at home. The camera is extremely light, yet 
very rugged, has a good rugged feel to it, very good build quality, and the photographs are actually pretty good, especially outdoor photography. It does an excellent job. Indoor, the flash suffers a little bit, but it's 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 acceptable. And I'd say for other cameras in, in its price range and in its uh, class, it's as good as anything else that's out there. As far as the video quality, the only thing that's really standing in the way of better video quality is the quality of the lens. The lens on this camera is uh, decent, but it's not as good as our ZS7, but our ZS7 is almost twice as expensive as this camera. So for the price, it's a great camera. It's an excellent camera for those of you who travel. You want a camera that can take snapshots. You can shoot video. It will shoot high definition video up to 720p at 30 frames per second. And you know, I think this is a camera we're going to be able to recommend on our website and to our customers. I would say it's about a 4 out of 5 uh, for its price range and for its class of camera. Anyway, if you're looking for a camera that's waterproof and a rugged, shockproof camera, consider the Panasonic Lumix DMC TS10.